That's how we own it! What's going on, kings and queens? It's your boy, my son. And I'm Tamika D. Mallory, and this is Street Politicians, the, the place, place where the streets, streets and politics meet. meet. It's been a crazy week since <laughs> our last Street Politicians episode. Hey, wait, There's wait. a lot of crazy stuff happening. Before disclosure, I need everybody to know I have a cold, so when you hear me sniffle and I got the, oh, the clogged up talk, and you might see a teardrop or something, but I'm here. Uh, yeah, you are here. You know here. I'm here. I'm here. Men, I tell you, it's something. When, Listen, when you all get a cold, it's like It's the my world. son. I just had to pick my son up from school. He had a fever. Oh. I didn't even know he was sick, so oh. I picked him up. He slept with me, so... Anyway, y'all just break all the way down. We should talk about that one day, what happens when the difference between when women get sick and we have to deal with all the stuff and go to work and be and well, be I'm present. Well, I'm at work, too. How the difference. You forgot I'm here? <laughs> the difference. But anyway. Yeah, I ain't curled up nowhere. So, yeah, it's been a lot going on, and I think um, there's been a lot happening that's making us more reflective. Mm -hmm. It comes out as pain sometimes, but after you start to process your thoughts around certain issues, it actually can help us grow. And I think that from the situation with Gail King and, and the controversy that's happened there, with her line of questioning uh, about Kobe Bryant to Lisa Leslie um, and then Snoop's response to that and the response of many others, I think it is opening up a space where people are having conversations that we we have, but then we don't have. And, and it's real deep. I mean, and again, unfortunately, there's the division. There's a divide, and I think we need to get into that and talk about it today. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, in New York, more locally, the in the NYPD is dealing with uh, two injured men, um, two men, injured officers, because um, a guy who they believe is the same person shot an officer, I believe, in his neck and chin area uh, while he was sitting in a police van over the weekend. And then the same person went inside of a precinct and shot an, an officer there. Um, you know, it seemed like some type of suicide mission. CNN reported today that the guy said that he did it because he hates cops. Um, you know, I don't know all the details there, but I do know that uh, you know, we can't, I, no matter what our feelings may be, we know killing, shooting, attempting to kill police officers and all of that is completely out of line. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, watching the sergeant's uh, union, the head of the sergeant's union, which is Ed Mullins, and I don't know if he actually tweets for himself, but somebody's tweeting on his behalf and the tweets haven't been removed yet, but they literally tweeted out, uh, from the sergeant's union, okay, the sergeant's union, the people who are in charge of the sergeants within the NYPD, they tweeted out the big game on to the mayor and told him that there is a war being waged against him. It was a threat a threat of violence, and really, some people should be fired, some folks should have to step down from their positions, and we'll talk about that. Then, you know, there was there were white men, I believe mostly men, maybe some white men and women, wearing sheets, half sheets on their heads at a rally in Washington, D.C. this weekend. Um, it's being labeled a white supremacist rally. They had all the signs of that in terms of uh, the way in which they were, you know, speaking about taking America back, which we're still trying to figure out what era and what period uh, do people want to go back to, um, you know. And oh, these, I know where they want to go. Back. Well, we know, we know where they want to go. Um, but they never able to to answer you when you ask them yeah, that. Yeah, because it's not, it's not um, politically it's correct. It's not politically correct to say. But they had a rally, hundreds of them walking through the streets in Washington, D.C., um, and visibly... Uh, wearing masks, and I call them half sheets because I just need us to know that or to be able to understand the reference p point that they're pulling from. You know, this is not a new thing. People covering their faces so that you don't see who they are. And I guess the question that I have is why wear sheets? We don't wear uh, masks and, and, and all of that to protect our identity when we're out there protesting for justice. So if you believe in what it is that you're, you're talking about, show us who you are. But perhaps they're lawyers, doctors. It's a, it's a coward. It's called being a coward. We should get into that because I'm not sure that, they, that all of them just want, that don't want you to know because they're cowards. 
I think there may be something else at play, but that's for a later discussion. The death toll for the coronavirus is up. I'm gonna be talking about this until they get it under control because what I know is that anything that's out here in the world will spread across the world and America, whenever things hit us, it goes far and wide and can cause mass destruction. Um, and we know that at this point, the numbers have passed in terms of deaths. It has passed the SARS virus, which we know was very, very significant as well. I think 700 plus people died with SARS. And now we're up to 1,000 people who have died with the coronavirus. All over the world, people have died, including an American who died um, in China. So a uh, lot happening there. People need to, I saw that nine people Nine people contracted it in one restaurant. Everyone that ate at that restaurant got sick. Um, and I think people just need to be really, really careful. And then the last thing, which is something interesting, a twist for us to throw into the conversation, a video went viral, uh, I think just yesterday, of a young woman who was a dancer, a stripper as we call them, and she fell from a very, very high pole. Um, and you know, you could see that she kind of, her fall was broken and she didn't really break her neck, but she really could have. So the video of the fall went viral. And then today she did a full video and, and put it out there saying that she's okay, that she has some uh, issues with her jaw and her teeth. And I thought what was interesting and why I wanted to bring this up today is that she, the, she, they put up a GoFundMe, a GoFundMe to help her with her uh, injuries and her, her medical bills. And within 11 hours, they raised $12,000 online to help this young sister. And I'm glad they did it. In fact, I plan to go and also uh, donate, you know, but then I think about at the and and. And by the way, shout out to her because after she fell, she didn't even stop. She continued to work because that's what we do as women. We do what we have to do. You know, it's unfortunate maybe why she had to, but, you know, nonetheless she did. But then I think about other causes like the young man who's on your page. That's what I was um, thinking. Yeah. yeah, the young man who's on your page who was shot um, while rapping in Brooklyn and, you know, he was shot in the head and how hard it is for us to donate to causes like that. So we should talk about that Definitely disparity, yeah. as well. Um, and I guess that, you know, brings me to my thought of the day. We're talking a lot and I'm sure we're going to have a robust conversation here about Gail and Snoop and all of the, you know, the elements there, 50 Cent and Ricky Smiley and everybody that's been a part of that. You've made some comments. Um, I saw Amanda Seals out there speaking about the issue, um, you know, and I just wonder in my thought of the day, are we ready to deal with what we see is a real divide between black men and black women, right? Are we really ready to go deep into it without causing more hate and harm, but are we willing to step into the pain that we all see? playing out, not in just this situation, but in our comments on so many different things. Well, I, that's a very good thought of the day because, you know, as you know, I've definitely been vocal about this situation. And, and um, what, what I've noticed, there has been from the beginning, you know, when, when Gail first did the interview and, and people were angry, the, the only people that, that, that were vocal, that were visible, that were of a level of stature were men, mm. you know, and and I, and and it was and I understood because men, you know, have they identify with Kobe? Most men like to act with Kobe is passed away. He hasn't even been put in a grave. Why would you ask his, these questions to a friend of his? Like, what, what what was the goal? His you know his daughters are still here. His wife is dealing with trauma. She hasn't even buried her husband. But you're asking him about allegations. That he was exonerated from. So I understand, as a man, we, we took it personal. I have been very vocal about a lot of women's issues. Like, mm -hmm. I'm very vocal. You know, I utilize my platform whenever women's issues, men beating women, um, rape culture. I, I did a, a thing that went viral on rape culture. And I've always heard, every time these things happen, I've seen a lot of prominent women calling on men to be vocal. Mm -hmm. That men created rape culture, men cre 
did these things and that we need to be vocal about dismantling these things. Mm-hmm. And to, for me, the, the, the surprising part for me is that most women mm-hmm. that I know agreed that it was that Gail probably shouldn't have did it. Mm-hmm. I didn't see too many prominent women making these these statements, mm-hmm. vo- like vocally that were visual. There was not too much outrage saying, "Come on, get, even if you was pulling the sister t- up." No, there was not too much of these same voices that I see that are very out there and 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 um, vocal about it when they see something happen to us. But then, which I don't agree with, when there was name callings and Bitches were called and hoes were calling. <laughs> Women started coming out the woodworks mm-hmm. and said, "That's not okay." Mm-hmm. Well, I, so I, I, so I don't think that that is true. Mm-hmm. I think you had a couple of things to happen. Usually, when people are asking for a woman to speak out on a particular, well, for a man to speak out on a particular issue, a woman has been victimized and harmed, and it is a culture that exists where multiple men are playing a role in this same type of culture. In this but situation, but got, wait, no, 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 okay. no, because the rape culture and what white women accusing black men of rape yeah. is a this is a this is a culture. This is something that has plagued black men since the beginning of history. And so so the for only a black thing- woman. To utilize her voice to uplift an uh, accusation made by a white woman that right. was never, never even fully substantiated. T- substantiated. I get that, and, I, so and I'm not, not, I'm okay, not disagreeing so. with you about that. But I'm saying that the reason why we, as women, ask men to stand up and speak to other men is usually addressing a larger culture where multiple people, men, and and a mindset, a mind frame but is happening is to. No, I don't think so. Uh, don't you think because so? in this particular situation, the white woman was not involved in it at all. It was Gail who was speaking to Lisa, Lisa Leslie, and Lisa Leslie responded in a way that I think most of us were very proud of. Mm-hmm. We saw that she handled the job. It's not that it was left open and everybody's like, oh my God, what happened? The other part of it is that I saw, and maybe it's because of who I follow and different whatever, I saw many women writing pieces, making comments, writing things in their statements. The reason why Snoop, specifically, was able to get the type of attention that he got from responding is because, at first of all, he's Snoop, and so therefore he always gets attention for most of what he says. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, the fact that he called her a doghead bitch and all the other stuff that he said created a different level of attention for her. For but him, that, but, for him. But, that, but that's my point. So I'm, so my I'm saying that. So I'm saying that. Basically, what probably would have had to happen to get all these women who are writing long pieces, making their statements, they would have had to say, "Oh, uh, Gail, you hoe ass bitch." No, like, I, that's, but that's what I'm saying. I'm just trying to explain to you that the, you're the, not, the you're, attention, I think you're the because point, it's there is no shortage. There is no shortage of stories that have been written, comments. Facebook posts from all different types of women. No way. There's no shortage there, there, of well, it. There's I, no shortage well, I, of. I would I would beg to differ. Right? No, no. There's. I'm I'm telling you. I I read this morning. Okay, but I'm just at least to... three different pieces where me. black women okay, are I've speaking. Read, okay, but but you've read three different pieces where black women are speaking to mm-hmm. that. But how many pieces and how many videos did they come out about Snoop calling her a doghead bitch? Yeah, You're probably and, about, and they should and, have. And, listen to me, and I'm not saying they should. And they should have. But listen to what I'm trying to say. I'm saying they also should have came out for her. And I'm, I'm saying that there are a number of people. Now, when you say, when you start saying prominent women. Yes. When you say prominent women, then we have to have a discussion. No, but I'm trying to tell you. But I, those are, I just those are know people that who are very, were very vocal when Snoop said what he said. And I would love for you to give me an example example that spoke against Snoop other than Susan Rice who to be clear no one cares what Susan Rice has to say nobody like my mother was like what like who we, we don't even know you in our communities mm-hmm. okay beautiful lady I've met her I think she did a great job glad to see that she accomplished what she accomplished but in, in relation to this culture and what is actually helping to move the culture forward Susan Rice is not the biggest thing happening at all so let's not talk, let's put her to the side. Okay. But I'm saying 
If you're talking about women on Monique's level that have that type of notoriety that when they write something or say something, it goes out there, mm -hmm. who are you speaking of that you saw go against um, Gail? Who? Who? I, I mean, so, I'm sorry, Snoop. What I saw, mm -hmm. and we could think about it and come back to it, what I saw was most women who said, I don't like what Snoop had to say, they had a very nuanced response. They're, all the pieces that I read, most of the things, the videos I've been watching, their, their, their position is, I also felt uncomfortable with what Gail asked. But I also know that we can't resort to the point of calling but that women was the bitches. Point. See, the thing is this. It, it, the, the whole thing was covered in, yeah, I don't, I don't I understand how, but. And then the whole thing went straight to, you can't say this And do you this, know who's, this. go ahead, I'm sorry. No, go. I'm just trying to tell no. you. So that's what it was. It was masked in. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but listen to me, brother. You can't do this, and you can't do this, brother, and you need to do no, this. No, no, no. Who it, did all of that? Because I have not seen, other than a man, Michael Eric Dyson, I cannot tell you one video of one prominent woman that's doing all of I'm that. A, I'm going to pull three of them up. Okay, so, but you should no, no, be able to remember it. No, no, who it is. Pull them up. There, there has not been one prominent black woman to spend their time Doing what you just said, going, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't do this. I've seen people tweet, Snoop is wrong. I've seen all of that. But to be clear, my son, you know whose fault it is that the, the energy shifted off of Gail? Snoop's. Snoop's. And I love the brother, and I respect what he, I, I respect the feeling that he had, the pain that he was feeling. Because I think we all felt that pain. Mm -hmm. But as I said to you, by him calling her out of her name in order to make his point, he shifted the focus off of the issue and allowed himself to be used as the more prominent conversation. Because nobody, even though Gail is asking this question, she's asking Lisa Leslie, Lisa Leslie responds well. People could have said, which we should talk about cancel culture and whether or not that's the right thing. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not prepared, as you said in your piece, that we're not going to hold people to their only mistake or their last mistake or whatever because we all, all of us fall short in terms of the grace of God. Like, right? We all fall, sh fall short. But people could have said, I'm canceling, Gail. That's it. You done. Even 50 Cent, who you know I have major issues with the way in which he speaks and the level of misogyny that I feel that he uh, exhibits when dealing with women sometimes, right? You know that. But even when he was asked about it, he I was actually like, oh, shoot. Like, 50 was, you know, he was clear. He was he asked some real questions like, what is your goal? And whose agenda are you working on behalf of? But when you get to the point when you start calling a woman a doghead bitch, now you're creating a different emotional spin. Well, what I want to say is this. Boom. You're able to have this conversation because Snoop did this. This this would have never gone to where it was because because 50 said that same thing about Oprah two months ago. And people agreed. No, no, but, I but, saw but, it no, everywhere. Like, but listen to me. Gail wasn't saying nothing. Oprah ain't saying nothing. You know why? Because it didn't reach the level of height of people saying, oh, this was said. No, because I... Listen, no, 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 listen to me. People been saying it for years. When Oprah did... The Michael Jackson thing, they've been, they const they've been constantly saying it. The reason why it reached this level is because the conflict of Snoop saying bitch and hoe to them. If he that, said, if bitch. he wouldn't have said bitch and dog hit, <laughs> if he wouldn't have said that. I hate to we hear would, you repeat I'm being it. honest. The reality is if he wouldn't have said that, it would have never opened up this level of dialogue. And, it's, and that's sad okay. for me. I, I think I, I hear you and I'm speculating and what I'm saying and you're speculating on what you're saying, I saw that after Gail asked that question, there was an onslaught of people. It was an onslaught. In fact, did he make his statement before she made her video to explain yes, herself? Yes, of course he did. Because I don't, I don't that's why it was. That's why it was based. That's what it was based on. She wanted to keep, because after mm -hmm. she he did that, Bill Cosby started We need to check was, the facts I'm, I'm, on that. Listen to me, I'm promising you. I, don't, I can guarantee you this, because I've looked at... And I'm like, yo, it didn't get... Before when people were just saying and we was saying, yo, why are you doing this? There was no real sticker. So here... There was no... So, it it so didn't stick anywhere. Just to, to move... I mean, I think there's so much more to unpack on that topic. And I still would challenge you to go and show me where people at Monique's level, mm -hmm. her level of visibility, uh, her profile, spent their time 
doing what Michael Eric Dyson did in terms of challenging men on how they respond to black women. Here's my thing, though. While, when we're talking, because the question I ask is, are we ready to delve into the divide, which I, you know, there's a lot that can be said about mm -hmm. all of us and Snoop and the dog, the, the leashing around the women's necks and all of that. People been bringing up all those things. I think in this particular situation, it wasn't so much that he was, um, uh, you know, being so dis so much disrespect for the women. I don't even think he was thinking about that. He probably just was hurting really bad for his friend. And as a result, as we all do, which we have to give him grace as well, he said some things that he definitely should not have said. I think it actually did a disservice to what was happening, which was a conversation about black women in media mm -hmm. and black women who are in positions of power. How are you using that to advance our cause or to hurt harm black men. That was the conversation that I still would like us to be able to center. Mm -hmm. Because I know a lot of black women who will never make it to a CBS uh, stage. They'll never ever be able to, you know, be at the level of Oprah and Gail ever because they are unwilling to participate in anything that harms black men. And in fact, they work in the opposite direction. So I think that is a conversation that needs to be centered. But moving past that and, and all, knowing that it's, a, it's, an, it's an impetus for a great dialogue, but there's been other things that have come up. And what, what is bothering me, I saw Jeff Johnson write a post telling black men, listen, basically the same kind of thread as, as Charlemagne, black women are not our enemy. And the fact that a black woman is challenging you does not mean that she hates you or doesn't love you. She's calling you to your higher self. These are men saying this to men. What, what I have a challenge with is why is it that every time a black man says that, the response is, well, what about her? Well, what about she? Well, why doesn't she do it? Well, you know, what, what's wrong with, why can't they challenge themselves? They need to be accountable as well. It's like, yo, you want to be considered the king, the king, the leader, the, 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 the head of the household. So why can't you take the lead on dealing with some of the very challenging issues that have existed? One thing Mike Warrick Dyson said that I believe 100% is that black women have been better to black men than black men have been to themselves. I agree with that. We have done, oh, we go overboard to protect black men. You know, somebody else wrote, all social movements are there to harm black <coughs> men. I'm like, well, well, when you say all social movements, which ones are you talking about? Because if you're talking about police brutality specifically, we'd be out there for black men and, and black women hardly ever get that type of attention. So I think it's a misplaced energy and it is unfortunately embedded in a level of misogyn misogyny that needs to be addressed. It's a problem. It comes from what you told me. There's a reckoning happening right now, right? So if you're twenty something years old and you don't come you don't understand what happened and how this misogynistic, you know, attitude and culture had plagued women and had held women back. And you going into spaces now, because I've been into spaces where I didn't feel comfortable as a man who even stood with women. I've been into spaces that were supposed to be for us and they were supposed to be you know, progressive spaces, and I didn't feel like there was a space for me, and I've expressed that to you. So what I'm trying to say, if you're not conscious in, of the history of misogyny and, you know, in, in those situations and how black men have have damaged black women, you don't really identify with that or understand it, and you're looking at what's happening now, and you're looking at how women are speaking, and like you said, you, you talk about Jeff Johnson calling... Um, black men say, yo, we've done this, and we need to do this, we need to do that. And you don't hear those conversations from women having that saying, black women, black men are not your enemy. You don't, because you don't, it just, it's just not a conversation that's had. Not saying it's, but the thing is, you don't, you don't hear it because you don't believe it should be had. You believe that it's been proven, but if you live it's, in... But that's not true that we don't have those conversations. But I'm just... I don't we see, talk about well, we talk about all the time. Support not. your support black men, support our brothers, and to the point that you just said, we are constantly forget about putting up a meme and a post. We defend and protect black men every single day. 
That's a, that's our normal practice. We get up in the morning concerned with what's happening with the black men around us and what we need to do and how we need to be there to support black men. In fact, when I think about even certain certain organizations and, and activities that I see black men out here, uh, you know, a part of whatever, upliftment and the same stuff that black women do, it's often black women in the background helping to make these things happen. It is. It's very rare that you see black men working within black women's organizations to help them be better. Well, I was. Well, I said it's very rare. But that's what I'm trying to say. That is very so rare. You are a you you ha and you also have gone through a transformative. But process. that's for everybody. That's the, you you have to learn, or, and, or sometimes you have to unlearn things. It's a process. But what I'm trying to tell you is when you look at this situation, when you look at Gail and what Oprah and they have done. And when you look at the comments that they make about Al Franken, when you look at the, well, you know, I, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I don't really know him, but I don't think this is wrong. But you you have the uh, audacity to talk about Kobe in a situation that you don't know what happened. But Shaka Singora, who's your friend, yes. wrote a whole post today about how Gail was supportive of him and treated him like, you know, he wasn't just a convicted murderer, but yet he was a real man. She put that, and there's been other stories out there about that. And I, I think I think in this situation, Gail was definitely wrong. And I also think that Gail, Oprah, and a bunch of other people are very, very disconnected from the culture. I, the I agree with that. But I think our argument... And our our issues, because I also know Gail to be a very nice person, a very nice and sweet. I don't know Oprah, but I know Gail to be a very sweet and kind person, right? But putting all of that aside, I don't think our fight is on that level. Because as you were talking, I'm thinking I'm really trying to go deep within myself to find where, what messaging do we put out there. The messaging that I think black women really hold around Black men is like, bow down to our kings. Our kings are number one. The black man is, he's everything. The black man is the head of our lives. That's what we would, we've been trained, and we follow that. See, the other, the part of it, and we got to move on from this too, but I think what really has to happen, to your point, you really just kind of, you gave me a lot to think about. Because even when I'm dealing with my own son, the education component is so important so that black men understand where the hatred for the black women began before the black woman began. And a lot of it has to do with us being enslaved in America and having black men not feel like they were men because they had to watch their women be stripped away from them, raped, brutalized, and even sometimes they were raped. So what happens, you know, with all of us, you know, something happened to you bad and it hurts, you start feeling away about about all those people who saw it because you feel inadequate. And that was that was a that was a design to break down the relationship between the black man and black women. And so many black women had to go out here and figure it out on our own. You know, and then you now you come to a situation where even with the welfare system and how it took the black man out of the household and said you can't have him here in order for you to get your section 8 and your food stamps and whatever, then that's another thing because black women had to learn an unnatural thing which is how to to lead their households without the, the 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 partner i'm not even gonna say the head i believe he's the head i believe black men are the head my mother and father that's the way in which they operate but some people that's they don't that they, they don't like that language so the partner but that's but those are the people that we need to have a conversation with so for me like when, when you have to make a clarity like I don't, we, I don't have to clarify that the black woman is mother of civilization, that they created. I don't have to say some people don't believe that. So when you say that, right, you make space for the people who don't identify with a king as a king, and you say, look, I believe that some people don't, they, that bothers some people. We have to ask, why does that bother some Because people? it also bothers some people when you call certain women queens. Well, so we all have, based upon our experiences and what we've been through and what we've seen, we feel a, a different way. And so you have a lot of women that they don't want to hear head of household for very specific reasons. Because you, why? Because they don't, because not every man, not every woman is is is, is walking in her queendom. Wow. And not every man is walking in his but the kingdom. the bottom line is, see, that's my, my issue is this. If I, if I take you as my woman, then you my queen. 
I'm not going to say the woman in my house is not my queen. Well, I'm not going to argue so, with you about this because I agree 1,000%. But, but, but I'm being sensitive. It, and that's what I'm trying to... The fact that you have to be sensitive that a man, a woman has taken a man into a home that she says she loved and she's bearing children, she's doing this, and she has a problem with saying this, my husband is the head of my household. Or or woman, but you, but, or, 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 or somebody <laughs> would have a problem with somebody calling a queen that you... You talking about somebody that they call protect our queens because that's somebody that they don't identify as this movement into. Like when we was talking about black women is do, have done this for black men, we have to be specific because all of these black women are not moving in the same I manner agree with you that Rosa a Parks is. They're not moving in the same. You keep talking, yo. You, even in your post, you keep talking about Rosa Parks. I love Rosa Parks, but it's people that's living right now. Okay. And you can name handling those, their homes and you have and, the and, ability and to name them. I'm not saying you can't name them and name those women, but they're not the woman who we talking what, about. You act like Rosa Parks movement was just about black men. No, it was about the black family. But that's what I'm trying Men, to say. Men, women, and children. But that's what I'm trying to tell you. So you, but okay, so you're saying that she and others who you named, I can't remember who was on your post, you hold them at the standard of queendom. And the rest of us, I agree, are living up to that every day. We're trying to reach that every day. But I think that there's different degrees of, of queendom. I think, I think, I think, I think any woman who is out here taking care of her family and doing what is right and not, you know, living her life in a way that is a complete disrespect to herself, she's living in her queendom. And I agree with that for black men as well. I don't think, I think, I, I, I think that we put too much value on money for men. And I, I want to say the, the opposite of promiscuity. Like, you can't have sex with too many men, and then you're a queen over here. And then if you got the money in the household, you a king here. And I just don't think that relationships were designed to be that way. So I guess we're saying the same thing in yeah. different ways. The bottom line is that there's definitely a divide. And like my brother Shaka Zengora said, he called me and said, I think that we need to have a meeting. We need to have a closed door because us airing out our, pr our problems and our troubles in the media is not really working. No, know? and it's, it's not, not. It's not helping us. So I think we definitely need to have. I one agree. And shout out to Shaka. Me. We love him. Yes, sir. Up my here, brother. Street politicians. We got to get him on. We got to bring Shaka up here. That'd be dope. Yep. 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 Well, and so we were talking, it's a strange transition, but we were talking about the NYPD and the officer here in, in, in New York City. I think you can't, you know, I think we have no choice but to ensure that we're constantly reminding people that our battle is not with individuals, but with systems. So shooting cops, and, and, I, and, and again, I'm listening to what the media is saying, but I want to be very, very clear, very, very clear, that I don't believe most of what I see in the newspaper. So I don't know what his real reason, until I see him somewhere standing, explaining it, or his mama, and, or somebody comes out, I don't know what his reasons were. But if what they're saying is true, that he hated cops and therefore he was out there on this, what I believe is a suicide mission, shooting cops and running in the precinct, because you can't run in the precinct unless you know, you know that you're going to get caught or killed, period, right? Um, but but, but it's oftentimes people are so frustrated with whatever they're feeling and what they're going through, especially dealing with police every day and knowing how aggressive and disrespectful some of them can be, you can't ever think, well, you know, I'm going to go take the life of a police officer because then, again, it becomes about individuals versus the system. And we're trying to kill the system. We're not trying to kill individuals. And so, you know, so that's, that's my statement on that. You know, I don't know if you want to say something before we talk about the president of the sergeant yeah. union. The sergeant's That's union. Crazy. But um you know, I, I think that um when you look at this situation, you know, it's it is very, very serious, mm -hmm. you know, in nature because as much as you understand and, and you don't you don't want violence, you don't want anybody shot, you don't want, you know, pedestrians and citizens walking up shooting police. We had to tear back layers to say, how did this get here? Mm -hmm. How how did we get to where a man is willing to take his life or lose his life to harm, to get this type of hate for police? Mm -hmm. And I think what, what we have to do in order to do that 
we have to look at practices in New York and throughout this country right. of how police and community you know, um, interaction is. Yeah, that's and, and, right. And if we don't, if, we, if we're not really honest about that and looking, right. because it takes a toll on individuals when you look at the news and you read the newspaper and another officer, another young boy is shot, another girl, another kid shot, and they justify and say there was no problem, he had probable cause, there's no weapon, these things. It it, it, it it preys on the psyche. It does. It's, it it does. becomes trauma. A lot of it does. people in our communities Though they they're not willing or you know they will never right will never go to the extent this man went but they do have a deep seated dislike I wouldn't say hate dislike mm -hmm. for our police yeah officers. there's a trauma that exists that is very heavy very heavy and I think we have to be very serious and intentional about sitting down and trying to unpack that you know I think the way in which the the sergeants like you about to bring mm -hmm. up responded. Mm -hmm. Is is classic for what exactly it is. The, the example problem. of it, you know, because I, I I think I mentioned to you that a few weeks ago, my niece is yelling at me because she's in my house and she's yelling at me, "Look outside! Look outside!" Saying that my son and the police something was going on with them, and when I went outside, an officer was accusing my son, having him pinned up against the car. By the way. They were accusing him of breaking in his car in front of our house. And when when I came out, other uh, family members came out, we let it be known that, hey, he's good, he's straight. They still were not willing to allow him to go until he provided them with ID and other things as if my son is going to break into somebody else's car right outside my window. Like, it's just, it, it, and the way in which they were acting and the way that they were looking at us, it was almost like we could maybe be lying about we, we know this young boy, so we just now, we just defend any black person that you see. If you stealing cars, we gonna come to your aid and just say, I claim him, he lives with me. Like, come on, you know what I mean? It's issue. just crazy. It's an issue because there's no respect for the community. Mm -hmm. Especially communities of color. We they criminalize us. They don't care if you're old, if you're 60, if you you prestigious, if you got a suit on, if right. you got a hoodie on. I wish some of our people understood that. You know, it doesn't really matter. So those are the things that we have to look at when we're trying to figure out how do we repair this, how do we stop the trauma, how do we make sure the things like that. These are isolated incidents. People are not just walking up. You know, you got to think about mental health. Like most of the time, of those are things that, you know, because a lot of us are angry with the police. You know, when you get pulled over and you told shut the fuck up and you and you you've seen these things happen, you become you have a level, of, uh, you know, a level of aggression, a level right. of anger. You like yo, you're not gonna, especially when you feel like you're right. Right. So a lot of people have a anger for the police, but people are not nobody wants to go out and just shoot police unless you're dealing with mental issues or you just to a point that that's beyond the average person that's in our communities. But we do know that there, excuse me, is definitely a level of anger towards our police and we just got to figure out And it's not all police. It's no. not all police because we do meet police officers who support us in the movement. Shout out to Edwin Raymond and the NYPD 12. Shout out to officers all over the country who yes. are supportive, who stand but with the, the community. But the thing about it is that those officers have to go they have to go rogue against their own organizations. They do. They do. To, and and, it, and it's dangerous sense. for them, it right? Is. It's dangerous. Well, for them. We looked at you know, last week I put up a post about the young girl, and a lot of people, you what know, young girl? there was a young girl inside of the train station trying to get on the train. Oh, right. So a lot of people were conflicted because they said she tried to hop the train. This is a young girl coming from school. You understand what I'm saying? She should have a train pass. She has a book bag on. She's obviously coming from school. The police officer sees her and decides she's not. She's like, well, I tried to swipe. You let all the people go through the door. I just seen you let them go through. So why would you stop me? Because I said so. Now you just want to be aggressive because. Right. So my thing is this: when this is where community policing comes in, you have a conversation, young young girl. Why would you do it this way? Or if she did it, I don't know the particulars. It seems as if she might have went another way. And then she said, "Well, I'll swipe." And then she said, "No." So now at this point, you decided that she's not even. Wait, gonna but get when it you say home. she said no, you're talking about the police officer. <laughs> The prevented. police officer prevented her from swiping. Right. And she said, no, you're getting out this train. You're not, not working on the train, train station. Like she and started the train. pushing her. 
Right. So at that point, you created a conflict that yeah. didn't have to be there with yeah. a child. Yeah. Like at some She's point, a child. She is a child. Definitely. She was obviously a child. There was nothing else she was with a child. And you, and you could see that she wanted to go yeah, home. Yeah, because when she said, well, it broke me when the young girl said, are you insane? Like, are you really doing all of this? Like, I know what she meant yeah. when she said, are you insane? Because I have had that feeling when dealing with police officers or people it, with authority that they're doing something that is so crazy to you because that you're asking, are you, are you crazy? Like, yeah. what's wrong with you? What I saw when I looked at that video is the older bully in school and the young girl g going back and forth. I didn't see professionalism. At all. I didn't see an older woman. I didn't see a police officer who's supposed to protect and serve. I saw two young kids going back and forth. I, I couldn't figure out who the adult was and who was the person with authority. It wasn't necessary. It just wasn't, in my judgment. It, it, and, by the way, because I started calling around asking my cop friends, what's supposed to happen? If she was jumping the train and or she did that, you're supposed to give her a summons. Give That's her a summons, said. and then she goes on about her business. If you, you, if you, all the rest of the stuff you doing is bullying. Exactly, and that's what I'm trying to say. There's a, there's an abuse of power that this, our yeah. police academy and our police authorities and the whole structure has taken on as the culture. Of the police department. It's, it's become the culture of the police department. It's, it's and you, always been, and you can And the problem is you can't deal with everybody that way. There are people who have, who are law-abiding citizens, who are not criminals, who are not ducking, they're not hiding from you. And when you address them in a manner that's not correct and respectful, they're going to they're gonna come back in the same yeah, manner to I protect agree. themselves. So we have to figure out that. You yeah, know, I really agree. And, but, but when your initial purpose is to... Uh, is immediately following slavery to be a, a sort of a, the enforcement of mm -hmm. a the system overseas. that was still trying to keep people enslaved, yeah. um, then if that's been the culture and the attitude for so many years, it makes sense that you would tweet this from your, uh, from your public page in response to the mayor. And by the way, we are in no way saying that the mayor is the best in New not York. That we're not saying that. You were saying earlier, you know, when he's he's questioned and asked for some accountability in some instances, he has done that. But it, there also has been a, you know, I feel like he has really tried to play to the police as much as possible to make them like him and be with him against the will of of his own, I know he knows better because I know him personally, and I know that Bill de Blasio knows better, and I also know that it's been against his own, his consciousness, and and and, and against what and and no, and against what makes sense. Like it doesn't even make sense for because you. Because you ran on, you to, ran on these things, so right, you, know, you knew that you knew they were right. You knew when you sat there and said, "This is what you're going to do for New York." You knew what it entailed. So for you to roll that back, and at some point decide that it's no longer relevant or it's no longer important to make sure that the police have accountability and deal with yeah. citizens properly, then there's an issue. So so this is so you know, then then this is what happens to you. He tweets out the mayor, Mayor Bill de Blasio, he says it was a quiet Sunday morning when bullets started flying inside the forty first precinct. Our officers handled it with heroism and extraordinary skill, showing the true caliber of the men and women who serve in the NYPD. Thank God our officers are alive. This was a premeditated assassination attempt against New York's finest. It was also an attack on all New Yorkers and everything we believe in. This must be a city where everyone can live in peace and respect. This individual attempted to destroy that. We will not let him win. Now, that's, that is strong messaging. Yeah. I thought it was strong messaging. You know, I thought that what he said was... Um, was was what was needed in that moment. His mm -hmm. officers could have died, you mm -hmm. know, and he as, an, as, as the mayor of this city was supposed to make those statements. But the response that the sergeant's union came back with was this. Mayor de Blasio, the members of the NYPD are declaring war on you. We do not respect you. Do not 
all caps, visit us in hospitals. You sold the NYPD to the vile creatures, the 1% who hate cops but vote for you. NYPD cops have been assassinated because of you. This isn't over. Game on. That's the response. That's a hit. I mean, it sounds that's that a hit, way to man. me. That's you get on the phone, yo, this ain't over. Game is on, yo, you know where you at. Oh, that's, yeah, it's like street talk. Yeah, this is straight. Listen to me. I'm telling y'all, Trump has created a different, <laughs> I'm telling you, Trump is running the White House like the mafia. So what happens is, it's trickling down, and a lot of these, these, you know, these officers come from the same school. They voted for Trump, and they want the same thing happening. Most of these officers are talking about marginalized communities where we come from because those are the over-policed areas. And they say it's not over, game on. So what they're going to do is do more harm to our communities, right. and they're going after him. They might try to take him out. So to protect yourself, de Blasio. These people is crazy, man. Yeah, I mean, if you know what we go through, you better protect yourself. So that's what we're dealing with here in New York. And, you know, to your point, we bring Trump up in the conversation. It's like, over here, we have the head of the sergeants. The sergeants have a higher ranking within the police department. This is the head of the sergeants' union. The union is the place where officers are supposed to be represented and they're supposed to get a level of education and encouragement. The union. Unions are good for people. The union is telling the mayor on Twitter, very it's Trump on. style, it's on. in very Trump fashion, it's on. That's what we have when going I was on in here. School, when people you told said you, you it's was on, on you, came you had to your, get ready. You came out with your sneakers on, <laughs> laced up. That's you threw me. your back up against the wall, and you was ready to go. You so. had to be. Yeah, so that's, a, that's a fact. A whole fact. That's a whole fact. So, so on one side in New York, you got that going on. And then when you turn the channel to another station, you see people running around with sheets on their faces, a mask, whatever y'all want to call it, bandanas and otherwise, protecting their uh, their identity from people knowing who's participating in these white supremacist So Okay, gatherings. so I want you to explain to me, because you say, I say it's cowardice. You know, at the beginning of the segment, you said, well, I don't think for everybody there. So explain to me what I you think. Thinking, because I think, I think because I think that there's a secret society that at some point they may or may not show who they are, but there's a militia that is developing. And in order for them, they're different from us, right? We know that these folks have been very, very strategic in the way in which they move. It just may not be time yet for them to expose themselves so that law enforcement and other people are not able to identify who they are while they build, while they build momentum. The problem is that a lot of them is already in law enforcement. Well, you that's true. But, I mean, there is a, there's an element of law enforcement that has work to stop or to, to, to apprehend people who are, like, openly white supremacy, uh, uh, spewing white supremacy. Violent white supremacy. Okay. Okay, there has been. I'm I not guess. saying I, I have any faith. If you say so, I, I ain't really seen I, it, but I guess. I'm not say, saying I have faith. I'm just saying. So you're right. They could be someone who you can't be the sheriff in a town and then have your face showing while you're in D.C. walking around saying, white power, take back our country. Mm -hmm. Can't really do that. Not that you are so much of a coward, but it doesn't fit into the abuse that you are uh, 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 inflicting upon people in your local town, the power that you need to be able to continue to develop your KKK style follow sh following and uh, yeah, following in your local area. And then you need to participate in the larger thing to be able to show people that our movement is coming, it's building. Come be with us. It just like I think it's just dangerous. It, it's definitely dangerous. I mean, a coward is the most dangerous person in the world because they'll shoot you in the back. They shoot you when you're not there. They stab you in the back. They try to do. They strategically try to harm you when you're off guard. Mm. So to me, that's coward activities. If I really have an issue with you, I want you to face. I want you to be able to defend yourself. I want us to be able to handle it man to man. But that's not how a coward moves. But overall, this their whole idea of what they're talking about is some punk shit. Period, and that's Probably how we right. feel. So that's exactly my point. <laughs> Moving on beyond that the right. punk shit. This girl that falls from the stripper pole. And they, God they bless you said what heart. they get, they don't, they raise the GoFundMe 
for twelve thousand dollars. Twelve thousand dollars in eleven hours to support her, and they should. And I'm going to donate because she probably needs help paying her medical bills. You know, I'm sure they don't give out uh, insurance when you work in a in a strip club. I don't know what other profession she has, but shoot, we even with insurance, we be needing extra help. So I, you know, I'm not trying to take anything from that. I just feel like there's got to be a balance, right? That's what I'm saying. Like I have a GoFundMe on my page. <laughs> A young man, you know, unfortunately, was shot in his head on Facebook while he was on Facebook rapping to a song, which pretty much promoted violence. And and he was sitting there, and as he was shot, you see the, you don't see the shot, but you just hear the shots, and then you you see the camera fall, and it's just stiff, and then you still hear the music playing where it says, "Headshot do, does a lot of damage," hmm. you know, and find out the young man was shot in the head. So when I immediately found out about it, I went to Brooklyn, um, met his principal, had reached out, met with the principal who brought me to his sister and his mother, and you know we we been trying to raise some money for the funeral, and we would have loved to get twelve thousand dollars because these are people very poor people. His mother, you know, she's an elder woman. You know, they don't have much. They from the projects in East New York, and you know they really trying to figure out how they're gonna bury their son. You know, and do no just him just being 19 years old. You know, 19 years of age, young man was shot in his head. And when we can raise this type of money for for this, which is because we don't want nobody to be hurt. Like a stripper deserves to make sure that she's safe. She deserves to be able to go to the hospital and have her medical bills taken care of. Mm-hmm. But when a young man's life is lost, and we probably raised about three thousand dollars in. Four or five days, you know, we gotta we gotta say, what what are we doing? Right. What's the, where's the balance? And I think again, because I I don't want people to go back and be like, oh, they said we shouldn't give to to the stripper who who you know the dancer who um hurt herself. We're not saying oh, that. No, We're not saying at all. that if you have a dollar, you may want to give fifty cent to help with the cause of of laying a young man to rest, and fifty cent to this young exactly. woman as well. But sometimes. These GoFundMe's become like you you want to feel like you're part of a trend. And it's not trendy to help a mother who, to your point, is struggling. You know, she come from the places that we come from. So we know what it's like. Funeral services is not it's not easy. It's really not. It's very expensive to die. That's right. It's very expensive to die. Very expensive. And, you know, and unfortunately, GoFundMe's has become the new funeral uh, uh, kitty. Which is it's, unfortunate. It's a, kitty. It's, a, it's a kitty for everything. People put up GoFundMe's because they need a new pair of sneakers. They put up GoFundMe's because they try trying to go on a trip. And whoever's willing to donate, they can get it. So it's become, but I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. it. And, th- and that brings us, see, that's a good segue. That brings us to pretty much our final thing, you know, that I do. Mm. That I don't get it. I don't get it. What don't you get today, Mike? Today, you know, I don't definitely don't get how... What just happened? How the stripper is gonna get more money than the person who's getting laid to rest? I don't get that, but this is kind of a, a little more light, you know. I hope all of you seen Power by now. Like if you haven't seen Power, I haven't seen it, so but, well, you, I, but I, I don't I, care. You don't really care. Spoilers. Are fine. So Tariq kills Ghost. Tariq was the person. His son, who he done everything for, shot him. I don't get if the whole thing Tariq. You were saying your mother wasn't going to jail. You went through all of this to protect your mother and all of this. Why wasn't you man enough to take the body? You were supposed to be protecting your mother. You let your mother go down because if for your body ain't even like she did it. You killed her and you still let her go to jail. I don't get how that man let his mother go to jail for the body that he caught. Well, I think... I, and. You know, I won't. I don't have a long response because I think it really plays into where we are as a society that we really are not raising our boys to be men the way and with that way that they were at a different time. Yeah. Um, and that has nothing to, nothing to do with sexual orientation, but just in instilling it's more real compass. right manhood and what that looks like. There's no way. That my mother was going to jail for the body she caught, let alone the one that I caught. And I said something before. I said uh, that he was his son. They are alike, but I don't know. I think 
really, honestly, if you think about it, Tariq probably would never have lived up to the character of Ghost. There's like, no way. The character he of Tariq have... would never have lived up to the character of and there's Ghost. And the thing is, there's going to be spins. He got like four or five different, different things, things yeah. coming and up. And shout out to 50 Cent. I have to give him credit when credit is due. Oh, but listen. His new the new show, show they got life. Y'all need to watch it. Yeah, you know, it's gonna be on ABC. ABC is a we dope We went to show, the man. um the uh premiere, premiere of it, and it's a real good show about a man who uh, is convicted of it's convicted of convicted a crime, of a crime, but he becomes a lawyer. Commit, he becomes a lawyer. Right. And he fights. He becomes a lawyer inside prison. Who's fighting for other? Who's fighting for other people who's fighting law, who's in prison who's right. getting them out, and he's actually winning cases. As a, a and it's a true story, as a and convict, he fought yes. for himself. And he fought for himself. So, but it's I a guess great it's a show. whole series. But when you the way it comes on, he's just coming from prison, and then he's bringing them. He's in bathrooms, changing, putting on his suit, and he's coming like a, a, a regular lawyer, and he's fighting cases, and he's. But he has it, to go back, you know, to to jail. Wow, he has to go back to jail. It's man. a good show. It's a dope it's a show. show. I look forward to it. So listen. <laughs> once again, you had your cold. I had my. You cold. You made it through. I had look. I'm still here, so you, you better be here even if you, you get sick. You are definitely here, and I would have to be here too, but I'm just saying I'll be upset. But anyway, thank you all so much for tuning in to another episode of Street Politicians. Right. We're getting the flow of this thing, having our conversations. We said that you know we'd be bringing guests on at some point, but we really want to get our audience acquainted with us, our personalities, our beliefs. Then and we we're trying to learn things. together. We're learning together we're learning, on we're this journey. We're building, we're building. Listen, if y'all got topics that y'all want to talk about, please let us know. You know, go to our uh, um, pages. You can go to Instagram, DM us, our street politicians. On, on Facebook, Facebook, Instagram. Yep. Um, we'll be providing you with emails. Anything that you want to talk about. Because we want to, we want to, you know, give us a Engage. feedback. Let us That's know. Right. Let That's us right. know what y'all think good about and the this bad. show, the good and the bad. Because yeah. the reality of the situation is, yeah. we're not going to always be right. We definitely won't always agree. But we're going to always be authentic. That's right. Peace. Peace. That's how we own it.